Hey Thunkers and welcome back to another Thunkable tutorial. In this video, we're going to show you how to build a checklist app and we're going to show you how you can add this functionality to any of the apps that you build. And it's all done without code, which is super cool. What happens in this app? Well, first you have a little splash screen and then it's going to take you to the app. Now, this is a checklist, so we're going to type in something that we have to do. Maybe it's build an app, make a sandwich, go to the doctor. Anytime you click add to list, it's going to generate below along with a little switch. You can click these little switches to turn them on or off, and that's going to let you know if you've done the checklist item. So what's really cool about this app is it's generating labels and switches every time you hit this button. And even cooler is when you hit the reset button, it deletes everything. So how do we do this? Well, it's this awesome new functionality that we have called any component blocks. And I'm going to show you how we do that in the programming section of this video. But really quickly, I'm just going to go over the design. On the splash screen, we have tutorials about this. I just added an image. I got this really cool icon from this library called the Noun Project, which you can check out. And I added a label for the checklist app. It's spelled incorrectly because it's a you know startup thing. Uh, and if you want to learn how to program this, we have videos on it. I'll just show you right now. We just said when the splash screen opens and in control, we got these two blocks, the wait for a number of seconds and also navigate to a new screen. So it's going to open up. It's going to wait for a few seconds, then go to the next screen. So let's show you how we designed this next section. All I did was I added a column to this whole screen. So if we go over here, you can see in the selection, I added a column. And inside that column, I put a few things. I put a label. I put a text input. And this is where our users are going to write. And if you notice that when we use this app, the border of the screen is not going to move depending on what we type into it. And how did we do that? We just set the width of this text input to be 80%. And I added a border by going down to the border section. I added a border of one. I made it this gray color and the border radius is 100, which gives it that nice circular uh, ending on either side. So great. Next, what I did was I added a button. So this is the button when you click, it's going to add items to your list. And right below it, I added a reset button. Uh, so when you click the reset button, it removes anything in your list. Now, this next part is a little tricky. Um, so I'll try and explain it in the best way possible. Um, when we click the add to list button, we're going to generate a label and generate a switch. And I wanted those things to be next to each other. So what I did was I added a row, this row, inside the column. And inside the row, this row right here, I added two columns. Uh, so it's a little tricky, but all of the labels that we generate for whatever your user writes, that's going to show up in column two, and all of the switches will show up in column three. Uh, again, it's a little tricky rows inside of columns and inside the rows, they're columns. But basically, this is all you need to know. This screen is one big column at this bottom section here. It's just a row and it's got two columns in it. Uh, when we click the add to list button, labels are going to go in column two, switches are going to go in column three. Uh, and when you hit reset, everything gets deleted. Uh, the last thing you need to know is we put local storage in this app. That's a component that you can find over here local storage, which is basically going to help your app store all the information that your users write for their checklists. So let's check out how we programmed this app. Okay, so as you can see, there are not that many blocks here, and I'm going to walk you through every step of the way how we program this app. So again, when button one is clicked, it's going to save information. So the first thing we need to do is say, hey, local storage, save some information. So I went to the local storage section, and I got this call save block and I dropped it in, and here's kind of how local storage works. Think of it this way. I'm gonna save information, and I'm gonna save it in a room. To open that door to the room, I need a key. So it's gonna ask you, hey, what's your key? And you can make this up. I just got a blank text block over here, and I dragged it in, and I said, I'm gonna call this key text, and what am I gonna save? I'm gonna save whatever our users wrote in the text input. So that's the from text input get text, which is right over here from text input get text. Awesome. Next, we have stored the information. Now we want to access it. So next, I got the local storage call get block, which again is right over here in local storage. And it's saying, hey, which door do you want to open? What key do you want to use? I just said, hey, we want to get whatever information we stored under the key that was called text. So I copy and pasted this block and dropped it in right here. 
So now we've stored the information and now we're calling it back. So what do we do with it? Well, every time we click the add button, we're going to generate a label and generate a switch. Uh, so I'm gonna show you how to do that with the any component blocks. So these are super cool. But once we have saved our information, we're gonna call it and now we wanna put it in a label. So I went to any component and I grabbed this block, the create button block, and it has a drop down menu. So you can create any type of component that you want. And I said, create a component and make it come first in column two. So if we go back to this uh, designer really quickly, you can say, here's column two. This is where our label is going to be. Column three is where we're going to put a switch. So let's go back to the blocks. So I said, create a label and have it come first in column two. And then you want to get one of these blocks in the any component blocks. And this is a block that says from label set text to be. And again, it's got a drop down, so you can do this for any of the components. So I said, create a label and make uh, the text be the value of what we saved. So when the user types something in, that gets saved as a value. Whatever they type in, that's going to get pushed out as a new label. Um, and all you have to do to format these is you need to drag this component block into these holes right over here. So next we needed to say, if I'm creating a label, I want it to look the same as the rest of the app. So for this, I just copy and pasted this block a few times and I said, uh, make the font size be 30, set the color to be gray and align it to the left. So now when you're generating things, they're going to pop up, they're gonna be the same size and they're gonna be all aligned to the left. Uh, so I did the same thing for the switch. I wanted to say, when you click the button, I want a switch to come into column three. And again, if we go back to what this app looks like and we scroll down, we have column three here. So our text is gonna go here and our switches are gonna go here. So what did I do for this? I just said, okay, when the button is clicked, you're just gonna create a switch and you're gonna have it come into column three. Uh, and when we, the switch comes out, we want it to start as false, which just means that the switch is not on. And when you click it on, we want the tint color to be blue. So what's happening here is we're just saying when the button's clicked, generate a new switch and have it come first in column three, uh, set the switch's value to be false. So it's turned off when it's generated. And when you click it to turn it on, we want the tint color to be this color blue. Uh, so that's all we had to do to generate labels and generate switches. And the last thing we did here is we want the text input text to be blank. Again, so when the user clicks add, whatever they wrote disappears and generates below. And next we just needed to program the reset button. So when I said, when button two is clicked, and where did we get these blocks from? Just go to the any component drawer, and you can see remove right here. We said remove all labels in column two and remove all switches in column three. So when you click this button, it will just completely remove anything that we've entered in. So that was a really quick walkthrough on how to design a checklist app and how to program one. It's a nice introduction into how to use these any component blocks. If you have any questions, please write them in below. Again, if you want a copy of this app, all you have to do is click the link in the information section and it will go directly to your account. Thanks for thunking and see you next time.